Hey! Whoa, did that crack? Hi. <laughs> All my life I have followed dreams. Dreams influenced, no doubt, by books read and movies seen as a child. Peyton, Hemingway, Ruark, Moorhead, Buck, I thank all of them for making me need a life of adventure, of suspension bridges, and rock slides, and raging rivers, and danger, and passports filled with stamps from faraway places. I also thank the influences that made me think good work was a crucial ingredient to a good life. And also that time was limited. And also that if you are going to spend precious time on something, then spend it with passion and to the best of your ability. So my life has been scattered through many countries, mostly in Africa, and many professions. Um, from education and public health to paleontology and research. The strange thing that has um, really surprised me is how connected everything has been. Schoolmates, however, not books and um, movies, were the catalyst that led to my past venture. On many, many years ago, on Friday afternoons, schoolmates would um, wave goodbye and good wishes, and I'd often hear someone say, I'm going to the ranch this weekend. I wanted to be able to say those words so badly, but we didn't have a ranch, and so I couldn't say them. But I made a mental note to one day have a ranch in Texas. So how do you have a ranch in Texas? You inherit, buy, or build one. I chose to build. And I looked for many, many years and ultimately found about 300 incredibly beautiful acres south of San Antonio at the end of a dirt road, the perfect site for the future L&M Ranch. And sometimes it's advantageous not to know exactly what you're getting into when you start a project. <laughs> um, over 19 years, I learned a few lessons, and I'm going to tell you some of the ones I learned. That no matter how carefully you plan, mistakes are inevitable. Post-construction, I learned not to site a barn where water collects after a rain. <laughs> and I also learned that water is a constant concern and needs constant attention. And even if you have three tanks, nine water troughs, a well, rivers, you still need rain to make or break a ranch. Life can't exist without it. Another thing I learned was that to manage grass, you need fences. By rotating my herd every few days, um, I could um, have a lot more animals. But the more fences you have, the more cost you have. And every Christmas, I gave myself a new fence. The other thing I learned was that some equipment is essential, but all equipment needs maintenance. The essential equipment for me was a tractor with a hay fork and a shredder, a four-wheel drive pickup truck, good working pins, wire cutters, a jack, and a pocket knife. Another thing, crises are constant. Um, Ranching taught me and enhanced my self-reliance, and I have become an amazing flat tire repairer and breaker and fixer of broken things. Also, a ranch is for animals, 
wild and domestic. The array of wildlife was phenomenal, from um, ants to foxes. Yeah, that's on my place, taken by my son-in-law, Johnny Walker. All of these were two domestic animals who, who really are the heart of the ranch, the cows, the horses, the cats, the dogs. But the heart of the ranch are the cows. These are incredible creatures, intelligent, compassionate, calving every year, rarely needing assistance, raising calm, fast-growing calves. It was essential that I knew each and every one of them. I named each cow, each calf. And pick your bull wisely. <laughs> he contributes half the genetics. He determines disposition, calving ease, quality of the calves, and the beef they ultimately became, become. Mr. Tate, Mr. Tate and um, his predecessors, with the exception of one, were all great bulls. A rancher really is a grass farmer. The more grass you have, the more cows you can raise. I learned a lot about grass. Hay. Hay is grass that has been cut, dried, baled, and stored. Making good hay is an art. Great hay producers like Clarence and Arnold have my utmost respect. I, uh, I asked them when I took their photo, they said, um, what are you going to tell people? I said, I don't know. What do you think I should tell them? And he said, that you have to be a dumbass to raise hay. <laughs> <laughs> Calves start out on um, mama's milk and then grad gradually transition to um, forage, and ultimately by seven to nine months, they are exclusively grazers, and that's when you wean them in as low stress a manner as possible um, until the mama's milk dries up, then you can put everybody back together again. Heifers are girl calves and should be close to mature before you give them access to a bull. Calving at about two and a half years of age, though considered late in Texas, almost certainly guarantees low-risk, problem-free calving and good maternal health. To rear calves right, they should be castrated early, vaccinated on time, and weaned late. One big decision a rancher has to make each year is which calves to keep, which to sell, and how and when to sell. Selling can be either by private treaty or public auction. Public auction is fast and easy but hard on cattle. By deciding to sell beef instead of cattle, that decision was lifted from me for a while. I was invited to be a vendor at the um, producer-only Pearl Farmers Market in San Antonio, and so I found a humane and competent processor, got all the permits and labels, and uh, learned my beef cuts, um, signage, website, and the l and grass-fed beef business was born. With the help and support of family, I um, sold quality beef and Dr. Closa 100% antibiotic free for the next 150 Saturdays, breaking only at Christmas. I became more competent as a preparer of beef and as a potter and eventually beef and pottery uh, a connection evolved and I started to produce um, cookware for, specifically for beef actually. Um, the l and grass fed beef business grew and became the bull and china shop. <laughs> All was going very well, too well. And then 2011 arrived and with it the worst drought in the history of Texas. 
tanks dried up, temperatures soared, hay became impossible to find, it was dwindling. There was um, no, solution, no solution, I had to sell. My chapter as a cattle rancher was over. So now what? Um, life being what it is and loving surprises, right after selling Public Service Act, the rains came. And immediately rivers flowed where there had been dry, barren fields for the last few months. And that's a good thing because nothing's more wonderful than grass. Anyway, and water, and clean air, and, and, and. Um, so the pasture started to improve, and now what? My future's unknown, the ranch is unknown, but um, it's going to be resolved with time. And in the meantime, we take walks, we watch the sun rise and set, and wait for tomorrow. Thank you very much.